When we want to uh, model a phenomena, uh, a traditional example, a classic example is uh, the flocking behavior. We see flocking behavior of birds. We can see flocking behavior in a school of fish. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to know that uh, these birds actually, uh, they don't have any leader. There is no leader bird. And we can still see this flocking behavior emerges and they only follow a very few set of rules. It's for the flock of birds, it's been, um, research has been shown that there, there are only three simple rules that each bird needs to follow to have this emergent phenomena of birds flocking together. And um, that's the main idea behind agent-based modeling. Just thinking of a all you can eat facility where you said they are very independent in their choice. Mm -hmm. are, are, so students, are they really independent? If they maybe a, a group of five uh, friends, yeah, if the first or less uh, takes a hamburger, are the others really unbiased? Well, that's pure effect. Yes, exactly. Could, could, you, could you take that into the model as well? Or do you always say, okay, every time the possibility to choose an item is always the same? Or I can definitely see this uh, being modeled um, because we had patrons coming into the facility on every X number of ticks. Uh, sorry, Nina, a tick is a time frame. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Every time frame uh, when patrons got into the facility, we we could have made a certain correlation between their choices for their most preferred station. So yeah, this could have definitely been modeled. It's not currently in the model, but that's a very good suggestion, Michael. Exactly. So it, it all gets down um, to um, how, how much you need to simplify your model because there is no model that can reproduce real world completely. But what we can do with a good model is we get the average behavior, statistically speaking. And um, for that reason, so we try to have a model, so we will go over it um, soon, but that is not too much simplified and also not having uh, too much details incorporated. To provide a showcase to the community, to the agricultural economists and etc to see you can use agent based models in order to um, understand human behavior you don't not always need to go and conduct uh, experiments field experiments expensive and timely field experiments to basically reduce plate size and then see what happens and then on the other hand like you said there are so many social factors, human factors, uh, demographics factors. Um, like for example, do they offer uh, fruits in a separate plate or you need to serve a fruit yourself? So these, these, all these factors can um, impact your results extensively. But then with agent-based models, we can incorporate all of these and that's something it's very tough to do using analytical methods if you want to do something similar with calculus. And then we end up solving uh, very complicated uh, differential equations, which uh, not always is possible. But when we have a computational approach, such as agent-based modeling, um, with a good set of assumption and with with uh, showing that the model is reproducing data that is similar to the real world existing data right now. So it has that reproducibility. Uh, then uh, we can derive good conclusions from it. Mm -hmm.